What's up you guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, we're gonna be installing an upgraded radiator on my Tacoma. As you guys do know, when we do go off-road, we're pushing these trucks really, really hard and they may overheat, you never know, because it's happened to me before. So we're gonna be upgrading my radiator, of course, flushing everything out, so that way I have everything nice and clean underneath. I'm right here on my good friend Jerry's shop, the owner of Beast Fab. If you guys don't know him, check him out in the description box below. He's the one that's gonna be doing the install for me today on this bad boy here. So let's go ahead and get into the video. We'll show you guys how to do it and what comes inside the box. So really quick, just to show you guys, as you guys can tell, it looks like super good quality. It's a CFS performance. If you guys do want it, check out the description box below along with the discount code for you guys. And looking right over here, what comes inside the box, it's gonna be these bushings here. You guys will see what these do later. And then of course right here, it's gonna come with some cool stickers and then some health concerns on that. And then it's gonna come with a tier D cap. I may not be using this just because I just got a brand new one that I like a little better than this one. But if you want it, it's there. The radiator itself, also comes with the performance cap so you could either leave that on or whatever it just says CSF on the top which you guys will see later let's get into the install so for me since I do have some CBI off-road skid plates first thing we're gonna be doing is removing those I'm not gonna tell you guys what size because I know not everybody has those you can figure that out on your own the thing of course that does not come included is gonna be the coolant I ended up just going to Toyota and getting theirs since I know that's gonna work perfectly for my truck it is a 50 50 pre-diluted coolant I ended up just buying two just to be on the safe side, but there it is you guys. Yeah! Depending of course on the skid plate you have, you have to remove it completely. Unfortunately one of my bolts is kind of stripped and we don't want to mess with it too much so we're going to leave it off to the side like that. And what we're going to do first is drain the radiator. To drain the radiator on the driver's side you're going to notice there's a little plug right here. We're going to go ahead and get a bucket underneath right here and unplug this and the coolant should come right out. One quick tip that Jerry wanted to tell you guys is go ahead and pop the radiator cap as you guys can tell we're in the engine go ahead and pop the radiator cap uh, so doing this allows some more air to come in through here so it'll make the coolant drain out a lot faster I know you can't see it on the camera but my coolant is nasty so that's why I did also want to put some new coolant in there versus reusing it and I was slightly low um, so yeah like I said I think my radiator might be slightly damaged because uh, we would refill it and then it would drop coolant and sometimes it would overheat so I'm pretty sure that was the problem so I'm glad that we're gonna be installing this upgraded radiator and everything will be nice and clean underneath so we've slightly uh, unscrewed it it should start coming out start dripping from there um, like I told you guys I think my radiator is slightly messed up and there might be dirt inside so it looks like it's not coming out correctly which that's kind of scary but basically that's what you do you would unscrew this thing and it'll come out right through here so while it's draining out like that we're gonna go ahead and start moving on the top to go ahead and start removing the fan shroud and a couple other things so we're gonna start off with this plastic piece here you're gonna notice all along the way there's gonna be these like pins going all the way as you guys can see uh, with that you could either use a panel removal tool or just a flathead to go ahead and remove those bad boys there should be three right here along the top and then there should be four back here Uh, it should expose, of course, the radiator and the fan shroud. So, um, yeah. just taking that off. <laughs> is, is it clean? <laughs> oh, there it is. Damn. This guy's strong. So, first step down. How yeah, do you feel? First step. Yeah, get excited. So, now that we removed this cover here, we also took off the engine cover. That one removes by just literally you lift it up, pull back, comes right out. There's nothing hard about that at all. Uh, so, looking right here on the radiator, uh, we've now unplugged the hose that was here. We just unplugged it and put it right over here just so it doesn't get lost. And then looking down here, you're going to notice the fan is actually right here. And it may be a little bit hard to see on the camera. I'll try to get you guys closer. You're going to notice 
right about there there's a nut there there's a nut there and there's two more on the bottom of that uh, that's actually holding the fan in place uh, you're gonna need to get a size 12 to go ahead and remove that the reason we're doing that is because when we do take that off and that way we can go ahead and remove this whole piece all in one it'll just make our life a lot easier so like I said you want to remove it there's the fan here and you want to remove those four uh, nuts two on top two on the bottom We took that nut off, we took that nut off, all we have left over is those bottom ones. Uh, what Jerry's doing is he's actually underneath the truck right now. As you can tell, he's working from the bottom to get those two bottom bolts out, just to make it a little easier. Uh, and then after that, we'll show you guys. I wanted to show you guys something that I thought was pretty funny. So I've been riding around with that broken. I guess I need a new fan shroud. Um, for now, we're gonna try to find a way to kinda Make it not do that, but yeah, it's time for a new fan shroud. Once you've taken off those nuts there, uh, up next, you're gonna start working on the shroud. You're gonna notice there's a size 10 nut here. We're gonna remove that, and then you'll remove the one on this side. Like I said, mine's broken off, so we don't need to worry about that. But for you, there's gonna be another one on this side holding it in. Once you've taken off that bolt, you're gonna notice now it's loose. And then of course, the one on this side, and then it should be pretty loose like that. After you've taken off this bolt, and the bolt on this side, if you have one, uh, you're gonna notice down here where uh, Jerry's hand is there's a clamp there it's gonna be kind of hard to see it even if I get some light for you guys but you got to release that clip that's just holding the transmission coolant lines and uh, if you don't release that you're not gonna be able to get the fan shroud out so there it goes and there it is so once you've unclipped it you could then release the hoses from the fan shroud which is what he's working on right now. And now that it's released, now you can go ahead and hop back up here and you're gonna notice right there uh, where the fan clutch is. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and grab both of your hands. Let me show you. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna go ahead and grab both of your hands, one on this side, one on that side. You're gonna push inwards towards you and then from there, while pushing inwards, you're gonna bring it all out. It should come out as one piece. There it is, as you guys can tell. And while you guys are taking it out, you do wanna be careful, of course, on not breaking anything else, not tearing anything. This step here does actually require a lot of strength. I wouldn't be strong enough to do this if I'm being quite honest with you guys, but it does require strength. And as you guys can tell, this is probably a good time to check out your fan, make sure everything's looking good, uh, make sure nothing is damaged there. Mine looks pretty solid, just a little dirty. Inside, you're gonna have a couple more lines that you have to release. And this one right here, this one from here, this one from here, and the big one for the return of the water pump, gonna be this one right here. Heck yeah. One tip Jerry just gave me and to tell you guys is he recommends doing the bottom big one that he just showed you guys. Uh, reason why is because if there still is coolant maybe in the engine or somewhere underneath, uh, that's gonna release the majority of it. So say you were to release this one first, you're gonna have coolant everywhere and you don't want that. So go ahead and release that bottom one, get a bucket ready and drop it in. And then you can go ahead and start working on the rest of them that we just showed you. He's gonna work this is he's gonna do it from the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see, as you can tell how it's working. Get some more light in here for you guys. So there it is. So there's that other hose clamp that he pushed back. I don't know if you saw, but he pretty much pushed the metal clamp back. So it's over here now. And then it used to be here for this tiny hose and he pushed that back. All we have left is this top one here and then the one from this side. But like he was saying, he recommends doing that big one first with the bucket underneath just to get ready to catch all that coolant. So there it is, one hose down, next hose down. One that I'm holding in my hand right now, this one's gonna have a little bit of transmission oil. So that's why I'm holding it up like this. We're gonna go ahead and clamp this down. As you could tell, what did was there, just go ahead and clamp off that hose, just so I don't lose my uh, oil from the transmission. Now that you got those two released, now we're moving on back up here. As you guys can tell, looking just to kind of orient you guys, it's gonna be this one here. Same thing, use your, uh, tool that you have to remove, push back. 
Now, let's go back onto the passenger side and do the other big hose that's up top right here. What do those fingers do? Oh, a lot of stuff, mechanical <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Now that we got all the hoses and everything out, up next, uh, what's holding it in place is gonna be a set of four bolts. So I'm gonna show you guys from the back side and then we'll go through the front. So right here, you're gonna notice there is a bolt coming out. So of course you gotta go on the other side to remove it. Down towards the bottom, you're not gonna be able to see it, but there's another one holding it in place. And in the same locations, but on the opposite side, there'll be one up top and one up the bottom. To access those, you're gonna need to go through the bottom here to the front side here and you're going to see there's one and then the other one's actually going to be underneath all this so we're probably going to have to access it from underneath here somehow with some extensions and there it is kind of hidden but it's there and then for the other side it's going to be the same process uh, there's going to be that bolt there which is holding the radiator and then up through the bottom you probably have to go through here too to get the bottom bolt and then it should finally release the all right you guys so now we're going to be removing the four bolts holding the radiator in place i'm going to show you guys from the back side and then i'll go on to the front you're going to see one's coming out through here there's another one on the bottom and then the same locations but on the opposite side there'll be another one one up top one at the bottom let me go from the top side to show you so you're going to see there's one bolt right there which is holding it in place. So you're gonna to need to remove that one. If you come down here, uh, oh shit. if you come down here, you're gonna notice that uh, bolt there, that's gonna be the one for the bottom. And then on this side is the other one for the bottom, which you can see there. And then if you come from the top, you'll be able to see it right there. So that's what we're gonna be working on and then it should release the old radiator so we can get rid of that thing and put the brand new one. This step, you're gonna need an extension which is gonna be a size 12 socket with a swivel as well. For us to access it, it's gonna be easier because I have this bumper. For you guys, that you guys have the stock bumper, it may be a little bit more work. Yeah. Only reason why is because either one, you may need to remove the whole bumper or two, you may need to remove all the panels underneath the bumper to try to access it that way. So just letting you guys know uh, before you dive right into it. Like I tell you guys all the time, you guys need help with anything, hit up Jerry, he can give you a quote right away. Now that we finished up the bottoms, we're gonna go ahead and now move on to the top and I already showed you guys the location, so let's get to it. Just like that, one down, on to the next. So once you take those nuts off, uh, the radiator is still gonna be kind of hooked in, so you just gotta play with it so that way it releases. And just like that, it should come right out. So oh, that's the old one, that's gonna go bye-bye. It's gonna be that time now to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'm sure overall you can tell which one's the new one and which one's the old one. This thing is disgusting, it has plastic all around, it's the factory one, it just looks ugly. Now we're gonna be transforming it to this bad boy right here, which is a lot thicker if you can tell. That's gonna help keep the engine a lot cooler and it's gonna look a lot better as well overall. As you can tell, the welds and everything like that, that's very well made and now there's no more plastic on this this one it's all aluminum it's gonna be freaking awesome can't wait to install it and before we get any further what we're gonna do is we have to go to the old radiator and you're gonna notice those rubber things there which hold the bolt right through there if you guys remember that's where we unscrewed it we're gonna need to remove them so there's one there one there come in on this side one there one there so you need to remove those. Uh, right now, of course, we're doing this on a third gen Tacoma. Second gen Tacoma might be slightly different, but just so you guys get an idea. One thing I did want to let you guys know uh, when removing these, take note, uh, they're going to be on one side, you're going to have a hook. As you can tell, there's a hook there. On the other sides, you're gonna have no hooks. So the ones with no hooks are actually, are gonna go to the bottom of the radiator. The ones with hooks are gonna go to the top of the radiator. So that way when you go to install it, it gets installed correctly. Keep that in mind. So now that you took those bushings out, uh, inside the kit with the radiator, you're gonna get a bag like this. These bad boys here are gonna come with it. And you're gonna notice uh, one side has like a groove cut out on the inside. The other sides are flat. So right now, pay attention how we're gonna be installing them, but I just wanted to point that out. And these bad boys are gonna get installed right here. 
in those four sections there. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the process on, uh, of course, installing the bushings and stuff like that so we can go install it. So looking at the radiator really quick, you're gonna notice it does have some writing on here. Uh, so the way you're gonna know the direction is whenever you do see the writing, that's gonna be forward towards the grill, meaning showing this writing here. Looking at the grill, you want it to face this way. Uh, now, knowing the direction of what's bottom and what's top, this here is gonna be the bottom and this here is gonna be the top. The way you know that is by telling wherever the cap is. So this is gonna be the top section here. Okay, so now that you have it kind of in the direction you need it, you know what's what. Up next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, of course, like I said, we're gonna start installing the bushings. So looking right over here, uh, this here and this rubber thing here, that's what we took off of the old radiator. Looking at this here, it's gonna come in a brand new hardware baggie that came with the radiator. And the way you're gonna install these is you're gonna notice on one end, it's gonna have kind of like a groove inside or like a cutout. And then on this other side, it's gonna be just nice and flat. So the way you're gonna wanna do this is the flat end is gonna be going upwards. And then the grooved out end is gonna be going downwards. And of course, once it's installed, the downwards should be towards the engine and this flat section should be faced towards the front of the grill. So we're gonna go ahead and pop it in. It's gonna go in like that, just to give you guys an idea. And then what we're gonna be doing before that is we're gonna grab the bushing and you're gonna notice right here, it does have the nut and on the other side, it's just rubber. So let's go ahead and face that nut downwards. We're gonna grab this bushing that came provided with the hardware, noticing the groove. So it's gonna go downwards into the rubber. Of course, now that you have it like this, the way you're gonna want to do it is like I was telling you guys, a rubber is gonna go inwards that nut has to be downward, so that way when it's in the engine, it's in that direction. So it's gonna be something like that. And then the way you know on this, uh, you're gonna have two of these, which these came off the old radiator. You're gonna have one that has hooks, just like this. The other ones are gonna look like this with no hooks. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the one that has the hook, which came off the old radiator. Those hooks are actually, those are gonna have to be on the top of this brand new radiator. For example, this hooked one has to be on this one. And the other hook that we took off the old radiator also has to go on the top there. The flat ones without hooks are gonna go down here towards the bottom. And you guys will see why when we get in the engine bay, why these hooks need to be towards the top to install this properly. If not, the radiator is just gonna fall and you're gonna have to take it back out and redo this whole process. So hook, top, remember that. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this right through just like that. I'm gonna hold it with my foot, <laughs> Never mind. right through. And then this hook here, we're gonna put it right through and it should sit just like that. So as you guys can tell, it should uh, be in this direction. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off the rest. We're gonna do the same thing for that top side and then the bottom ones will have the ones without hooks. Same process. Now that we have all four installed, just remember those hooks have to be up top. Let's go ahead and now go into the engine bay so I can show you guys why I was making that a big point. Let's go. Now that the radiator's prepped and it's ready to go, we're gonna move on to the truck. So one thing you wanna notice is right here. So remember we were talking about those hooks? They're gonna get latched into there. And then on the other side, there's also gonna be another section there where he's pointing. That's where you're gonna latch it in as well. So a cool thing about having those hooks is it'll hook in and then that way you don't have to worry about just kind of holding it all the time. It'll latch in, kind of hold itself, and then you can screw it in and continue the process. So what he's doing here is he's just hand tightening the bolt. Uh, the bolts you're gonna be using are gonna be the factory ones you had first taken off. They go in the same place. Uh, 
Once you tighten everything down, it should kind of push itself forward. So just keep in mind, as long as you install these bushings correctly, the radiator should be installed properly. So keep that in mind. Now that you know you've uh, hand tightened all the bolts, this one, that one, and the two that are on the bottom, which we had to go through the bumper to get, um, now you wanna go ahead and tighten them down all the way. You don't want to over tighten because you can mess something up. Just tighten it. Tell it As you can tell, the brand new CSF uh, performance radiator is now installed. So up next, uh, now that we've tightened everything down, it's not moving, it's not going nowhere. We're going to go ahead and start reconnecting all the hoses. It's going to be kind of similar exactly the way you took them off. You're going to go ahead and install them in the same process. Uh, so that's what we're going to work on. So let's go ahead and start with the driver's side hoses. So the same way you guys took them off, it's going to be the same way to put them back on. And they should be in the same uh, orientation as well, as far as the bottom one being the big one and then the two top ones. Uh, just make sure to put them in the correct location. So as you can tell, uh, they should just slide right in. As you're gonna see, Jerry's gonna go ahead and put on the clamps back on using his tool for that specifically. So we'll go ahead and clamp them down and bring down the clamps. It's clamped down correctly. You don't want them to have any coolant links or anything like that, because then of course your truck will just overheat and it defeats the whole purpose of this whole upgrade and flushing out the system. So now that the bottom one's secured, we're gonna go ahead and work on that top one, as you guys can tell. That's what he's doing right now. And just like that, slide it over, move on to this top one here, and do the same process. Top one's installed, those two bottom ones are installed. Now coming over here, same process. We'll go ahead and slide it over, and then we can put the middle clamp. Now that last one left over, which is right there at the top, that one's gonna be for the reservoir coolant uh, tank. We're gonna go ahead and now put back the shroud. Uh, one thing I did wanna tell you guys, uh, of course, when we were taking that off, my shroud is broken. I'm gonna show you guys why. So noticing right here at the top, this is fixed. I mean, this is actually how it should be. Looking on the opposite side right here, it's snapped. So I'm actually missing this side. So when we go to reinstall it, my shroud's gonna be a little bit loose. It's not a big deal, uh, but we may make you mouse something right now just to make it work properly. Mm -hmm. Until I could get the money to fix it and buy a new one, of course. Uh, we just wanted to show you guys that, just so that way I can talk about it. When we go to install it, I'm gonna show you guys what I meant by that. So now uh, let's install this bad boy. So when installing it, uh, you wanna make sure that the fan is with the actual fan shroud. So you have to install it like this. So there's no way of holding it. You're just going to have to use both hands. So let's go ahead and uh, bring it in. And you want to make sure, of course, the coolant tank is facing towards the engine. But when you're putting this in, you got to make sure you put it in at the same time or it's not going to go in. But you just got to work it. Take your time with it. Don't get frustrated. If you are going to get frustrated, you already know, hit them up. Now the fan shroud and the clutch is in place. Oh, we're going nice. to go ahead and put the four nuts that were on the fan clutch connected to the motor. And we'll go ahead and tighten those down to spec. We just finished putting the four nuts. Now what we're doing right now is just putting the bolt that went into the fan shroud which is right here as you can tell uh, Jerry just did it by hand unfortunately for my other side that's the one that's broken so I can't <laughs> put that one we're gonna go ahead and probably put a zip tie or something just to keep it in place so for example uh, if you guys don't have a broken shroud like mine uh, you should have another bolt that's gonna go through here which that's gonna secure it reinstall the hose that goes from the reservoir here onto the radiator cap and then we can fill this thing up so as you can tell we've now uh, reinstalled this top hose that I was telling you guys that goes from the coolant to the radiator cap. Uh, what we've done here is we've unscrewed the radiator cap and then we've also unscrewed the cap that goes on the reservoir tank and put the shroud back on. This is the one that you just go ahead and clip on and that's basically it. Look how clean that looks you guys. Let's put the engine cover back. Super simple, you just start with the back just like that. You clip it in and then you bring it back down, give it a little tap. That's good to go. Engine bay looks pretty much back to normal. Besides this big boy radiator that's now installed. Right, let's fill it up. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up. What we're using here is gonna be Toyota product. So I did get this at the dealership. If you guys do end up wanting to go ahead and get something like this, visit your local dealership or maybe Jerry can get it for you guys. I'm sure there's other ones that are also recommended, but I just wanna stick to Toyota because it's a Toyota. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 
now we're basically done with the installation. We've now topped off the coolant. As you can tell, it's on the full mark. Radiator's all topped off. What we're gonna be doing right now is we're gonna go ahead and turn on the truck. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let it run, kind of run through the system. And then we're gonna go recheck it just one more time just to make sure it's full. Uh, we ran about a gallon and uh, I can't say a how quarter, much. Like probably a, a gallon and a quarter. quarter of coolant from yeah. Toyota. Uh, just so you guys get an idea. But like I said, we may have to put in a little bit more right now that the system runs through everything before you starting the the truck make sure you have enough space and your fan is not hitting the radiator or nothing because you don't want this thing to fly apart plus damaging your radiator okay you gotta wait until the, the thermostat opens so everything can start flowing okay so because right now oh you see it's starting going little by little you see oh uh, yeah little by little free car wash right here <laughs> we let the truck heat up all the way. So right now we're gonna show you guys. So coming back in the truck, uh, we just kind of paid attention to the temps and they're basically stabilized there. Cool thing about this feature here, uh, this was a shout out to Steve at Raventure on Instagram. Uh, he's let me borrow this for a while. So it's gonna be cool to see it now uh, with the new upgraded performance radiator. So I can go ahead and reach the temp, read the temps with a brand new one versus what I was before previously with the old radiator that was kind of causing me issues. What we need to do is of course reinstall my skid plate and we are done with this installation. We just finished with the radiator installation on Jesse's truck. We turned it on, everything went fine, smooth. Uh, the temperature is right at where it's supposed to be. So no leaks so far, everything is good. That's all we did today. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe on Jesse's uh, YouTube channel. And for us, you, as you guys know, you know, um, Beast Fab right here, we can get you guys, you know, help out with whatever you guys need uh, we do uh, fabrication we manufacture parts for any kind of vehicle off-roading we uh, install you know high performance suspensions whatever you guys need uh, we do a bunch of stuff please uh, give us a like um, give us a follow anything guys you guys need my description is gonna be down in the box below so thanks for watching today we'll see you guys later Feel free to subscribe